Hello and full person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing this relatively recent discovery about this somewhat exciting region that we're sort of in the middle of, known as the local bubble. The region that you kind of see simulated right here, and something really exciting has been recently discovered about this region, helping the scientists understand and to some extent map a lot of the nearby star formation regions, and also helping us understand how most galaxies, including of course the Milky Way, most likely evolve and create new stars. But I guess more importantly, really helping us understand a little bit more about our own neighborhood and our place in it. But first of all, let's start with this beautiful map created a few months ago, the map I showcased in one of the older videos, that basically shows us what the local neighborhood sort of looks like with all of the nearby stars, with the sun right here in the middle, but also sort of demonstrating a lot of different cloud formations around the sun itself, with this distance right here being approximately 65 light years across. And if you look at this map, you'll see that our sun seems to be sort of in the middle of two different clouds, the local interstellar cloud and the so-called G cloud. And a lot of modern studies are actually trying to understand what effects the clouds that we're sort of passing through has on, for example, planet Earth, on a lot of different types of radiation reaching the solar system, and more importantly, if it actually has any effect on the climate, of course. Mostly because some previous studies have even suggested that by passing through these clouds, it sort of increases the amount of interplanetary dust, which can then maybe block the sunlight. Now, none of this has been definitively proven, and most of this is still kind of just assumptions and ideas that are kind of difficult to prove, but it still would be interesting to find out if passing through these clouds has really any effect on anything in the solar system. The more important point here is that, well, there are quite a lot of these clouds, and most of them were most likely created by ancient supernova. But if we were to zoom out of here quite dramatically, we would also find ourselves in the so-called local bubble, sometimes also referred to as the local cavity. And this unusual cavity or this local bubble, in essence, is a kind of a void that's approximately 1000 light years across, with quite an unusual shape, not really spherical, where the actual density of hydrogen, and specifically neutral hydrogen, is approximately 10 times lower than it is everywhere else in the galaxy. Or in other words, it's basically a low density area. In other words, it's a kind of a structure that seems to be extremely low in density and has way, way less hydrogen than a lot of other areas in the Milky Way. And to be more exact or to be more mathematical, in the local interstellar cloud, the density of hydrogen is approximately 0.3 atoms per centimeter cube. Or to give you a more visual analogy, a single volume equivalent to a typical sugar cube would contain 0.3 hydrogen atoms. But if you were to leave the cloud, and if you were to then reach the so-called local bubble, the density drops by about 10 times. It becomes about 0.05 atoms per a single sugar cube. And so the question here was, well, first of all, what exactly created this local bubble or this low density cavity? And more importantly, does it have any effect on the nearby space? And for the longest time, one of the main culprits for the creation of the local bubble was the very, very famous pulsar that exploded as a supernova, the pulsar known as Jiminga, one of the brightest pulsars in the night skies. But this was an assumption from years ago, and since then the scientists realized that the local bubble is just way too big to be produced by a single supernova. And this is one of the first things that this recent study was able to kind of clarify. The study here explained that at least several different supernova over a period of about 14 million years had to occur in order to create the local bubble that we have today. So it wasn't just one single pulsar, it actually probably created several pulsars and possibly even several black holes. Interestingly, the study also clarified that the Sun and planet Earth were not around back then, and it just so happens that we entered this region completely by accident now. In other words, the fact that we are right at the center of this local bubble is sort of a complete accident. The solar system is flying through this region and is going to leave this region in the next few millions of years. But because there were 15 different supernovae happening here, at least one of them might have affected planet Earth to some extent as well. Although that's not really the main point here. The main point is that while well, this bubble is still quite dynamic and it's still growing, with the material moving away from the center at approximately 6 kilometers per second. 
But what's even more exciting about the discovery from this paper is the fact that the scientists identified several star forming regions. And so here we're talking about regions where usually you have very active star formation, all of which seem to be right at the edge of the bubble. All of which is slightly easier to see in the map that you can find in the description below. In other words, what this study suggests is that this bubble and the creation of this bubble might be directly responsible for pretty much most of the star formation in all of the nearby young star forming regions. And that of course includes pretty much most of the molecular clouds that scientists usually use to study these star formations. As a matter of fact, this study even goes as far as implying that within about 500 light years away from planet Earth and the sun that you see right there, all of these star forming regions and all of the young planets and young stars literally sit on the surface of this giant bubble. With the bubble itself most likely being directly responsible for initiating their formation. Possibly by forming some kind of a pressure wave as all of the cavity expands and creates the actual conditions needed to start star forming regions with all of this driven by the pressure created from a lot of these supernova in the past. And specifically, these seven star forming regions that have been studied in the past by many different studies all seem to be right at the surface of the bubble. And that's actually a pretty big discovery. This implication suggests to us that maybe this is actually how all of the star formation starts in various galaxies out there as well. Basically, by having these really large cavities that are created by various supernova, the surface of these cavities, the surface of these bubbles, might create all of the necessary conditions for new stars to start forming and thus create new generation and new population of stars that will then lead to new supernova that will then produce even more stars. Furthermore, just the fact that we seem to be right in the center of such a super bubble is basically a statistical anomaly. It just means that there is a really, really high chance these super bubbles are extremely common, mostly because we found ourselves right in the middle of one. It's very unlikely that there's just one such bubble in the entire galaxy, well, because statistically we would not be right in the center of one if these structures were not common. And that, of course, implies that the Milky Way galaxy is probably made up of all of these super bubbles all over the place with many of them doing exactly the same thing, creating these cavities and creating the surface of cavities where new stars form. To some extent, the scientists in this paper even compare this to Swiss cheese. With every hole in the galaxy, or every hole in a cheese, created by these really large supernova that happen over time, with each individual surface of each individual bubble serving as the new formation region for new stars and new planets. Furthermore, because all of these star forming regions seem to be moving away from the center of the bubble, with the actual velocity vectors pointing away from the center, all of these discoveries from this paper further suggest that this seems to be indeed the process that leads to the formation of a vast majority of stars in the galaxy. Possibly not all stars, but many stars. With this 3D map right here being the most accurate representation of the nearby space. But naturally, there are still quite a lot of questions. For example, we obviously don't know how many of these bubbles or super bubbles we would find in a galaxy like the Milky Way. Because technically these are voids and they contain less material on the inside, they would be very very difficult to detect since it's a lot easier to find something rather than find nothing. The scientists also don't really know if these bubbles end up touching at some point and what happens if they do touch. Do they actually interact with one another in some way? And if they do interact, what exactly happens when they do end up colliding? But I guess the bigger question here is, well, how exactly do these super bubbles and their expansion drive the formation of new stars? What processes play a role here in order to begin the star forming regions that we've observed so many times in different studies? They obviously produce some kind of a pressure wave because of these ancient supernova, but what's the actual process by which the pressure wave then forces the material to start coalescing into stars? So definitely a lot of questions to answer, even though this is a pretty exciting discovery helping us understand a little bit more about our own galaxy. What do I guess for now? Well, that's pretty much it. Check out the really relevant links in the description below, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. 
Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.